Is there a world in a serious conversation where Mario cost Cam Ward Heisman votes because he did not trust his best player seemingly in that spot to win a game for him or tie a game for him, and he took the ball out of his hand, and then voters can say, well, if this is the greatest player in the country, why did his coach not put the ball in his hand when the game was on the line and the playoffs were on the line? Uh, I understand that. Look, Travis Hunter was minus 1,000. (laughs) <laughs> to win the Heisman Trophy entering that game, and all he did was get an interception and three touchdowns prior to that Miami game. So I don't think there was anything that Mario could have done to win this. In fact, maybe he was a little too infatuated with trying to win Cam Ward a Heisman Trophy because you salt that game away when you're effectively running the ball like that. A lot of people have takes on the on the field goal. I, you assume that Miami can score on a fourth and goal from like the 15. That That's not easy. Um, and also you still need your defense to stop them. I think the rationale would be go for it because you'll run into a Syracuse offense that's going to be a little bit more conservative, and maybe you have a better shot at stopping them. No, we saw that conservative offense kill the game uh, against Miami. So ultimately they they blew it with their mistakes and they blew it with, with their defensive performance. And I actually think that Miami's been in a lot of close games this year, and Mario Cristobal has actually avoided blowing them. Like he, he, you look at, they've had, what, nine really close games this season where it's come down to his in-game management. I've talked to people in the NFL that crunch those numbers in terms of was this the right analytical call? They all said it's pretty close. You still need to stop. So, And it's not the first time he's opted to let me go for the win on my next possession. Ultimately, they just blew it. They, they couldn't stop Syracuse defensively. I didn't get to watch the first half of that game. Rose got pepper sprayed, so we had to deal with, yeah. with mm. other things. Mm-hmm. I guess my sort of like pushback on that is like you gave up a 21-point lead and you're going to put faith in your defense in that situation. Right. Like It just seems kind of crazy to me, especially when you do have Cam Ward. I'm not quite sure how he was playing in the first half of that game, but like you have one of the most electric players in college football and your defense has just crumbled to Syracuse. I don't know why you wouldn't just be like, all right, this is the time. This is what we spent all this money for. That's a spot like, you don't trust your defense. Yeah, they give up no, 28 points exactly, in the second half. Exactly. Right. That's the spot where you're like, hey, we are one of the best offenses in the country. Like I'm going to put faith in my you know, Heisman finalist quarterback here I, I don't get it but also I didn't get to watch the whole game I, I think it's Rose. I think it's a fair enough criticism but I also sure. think it's well overblown you're underselling really how catechismic that 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 failure was across the board I think a lot of people are just looking for confirmation bias when it comes to Mario Cristobal and want to seize on like the one thing in that game that they felt was a coaching decision in any scenario you you still have to trust your oh but it's not just that because a lot of the criticism he got too was a lack of discipline because of what happened with Moten and what happened with George, George and yeah. and what happened in general with um, them losing a game after being up 21 nothing the only reason that I would have gone for it even though uh, it's uh, the odds are against you in a condensed field in a fourth and long situation it's because of how useless those three points felt and if I was going to fail with my best player at the very end of my season at least I'm pinning Syracuse back where if they want to throw they're near their own goal line and so I'd prefer to try and stop them back there than having them have better field position and getting those three points those three points did nothing for me I, I get the logic it's it's one of those things that I, I don't even feel really strong about what happened I don't think it really had any say in the game it I I'm not a big fan of any opportunity that you have to make a one score game a one score game you take this is what I would tell you based on what was going on in the second half of that game I'm not even looking for a successfully executed play there I'd like my chances better of getting a holding call or a pass interference given how many of those there were in the second half that convert a first down than than to have the three points I get it but I, I think that second half showed me Okay, we go to overtime. We still lose this game. We're not going to get the stop. We're going to keep blitzing the Why can't I safety. move you off the position, though, when you say they would have had a shot this year? Why can I not? Why are you being so stubborn about if their defense can figure it out? It's a bad defense. But like, we Syracuse just, throws the ball well, it. but it's not like it was it, great offenses I, that were running over them. This is, a, this is weird because, like, I agree with you. It's not a good defense. But every – counting metric that you could use outside of really deep analytics yards per play like it's one of their better defenses historically like you've had defenses rank where they rank and they are deemed championship level especially with that offense so there 
it depends on the opponent. And I think once you get deeper into the college football playoff, you have teams that will pull like a Wake Forest. This is our identity. This is what we know how to do. We're going to challenge you in the A-gap. We understand that you're bad at this in tape, but a lot of teams, they're just going to maintain their offensive identity because they see a bad defense that they don't really respect anyways. And that's where Miami actually thrives because you're playing more to Miami's strengths. If you focus on where Miami is weak, they have shown you the entire season. They can't stop it. Dating back to the Virginia Tech game, where Virginia Tech was forcing them to make tackles in the flats, if you if you isolate their secondary and you try to make them make plays, they are not going to make plays. If you motion out the running back and Kiko Maunoa follows them in, into motion, it's an automatic chunk play. That's been the book all season long. It's what's going to cost them the CFP. It's a damn shame because – Miami is right there in terms of teams that deserve to be in this tournament. You can make an argument. Yeah, I, I'm with Lucy. I think ultimately she'll be right. Those those two SEC teams, either Alabama or, or SC, are probably going to get in. Then Miami, I'm sorry. You're like the 13th best team this year. They're only letting 12 in there. It's a good season and a major disappointment because that offense, that quarterback, I believe in this year of parity, had a shot. The, certainly, I would love to see them in the CFP. You're telling me Cam Ward goes to South Bend, Indiana? Let, let, bring it on. Let's see. I, I feel good about my chances because I, I like my quarterback. But they're not going to get that chance. They're not going to win against this SEC propaganda machine, and they blew it. It was all there for them. They blew it. The defensive metrics are fine, but that's the criticism of Mario Cristobal that I think is fair, Mike. You can't use body of work. It's got to be game to game. And in that game, in that moment, when you have given up 42 points – in three quarters to Syracuse, and you have the best quarterback in the country, the guy you wanted, you got him out of the portal, he needs a first down. He needs a first down to get you to the playoffs. They're on the 10-yard line, and he decides to kick a field goal. That is a terrible job by Mario Cristobal. Terrible. I, th I think you can get on Mario about a lot. Ultimately, those concerns are always going to be there about Mario. I think he's done pretty well this season in addressing some of those time management issues that plagued him the first two years here. Ultimately, you want to build a program that has a talent advantage that you don't it doesn't have to come down to those margins.